Welcome back after this short break. It's been an explosive set of games already. We have a couple of absolute favorites now to book their ticket to Riyadh at the end of this year for the ISF World Esports Championship qualifiers here at the regional finals for the Asia and Oceania region. Pakistan. Let's quickly touch once more on Pakistan. Kobo, is there anything else they could be doing better? Let's let me let me ask it this way. Is there anything else you you, you don't see absolutely perfect right now? Um, yeah, you're having to think, right? Yeah, so it, the it's, last it's game, a tough question. where they clear that shack, and they clear the Malaysian player in the shack, if they have any sort of util, probably would have been good to use it. But that being said, um, they had a different Malaysian player right behind them. So I think they just wanted to rush that down and not get stuck in the open. So I, it's hard for me to say. I think they're showing us a masterclass right now. And uh, the only thing you can talk about is the first three games of the first day. That's when they didn't show up at all. Mm. And that's where you can find a lot of mistakes right now. Um, I, they, these are not mistakes that I, as a coach, would try and even talk about because they're doing so much right and so little wrong um, that it's barely worth talking about any mistakes here, I think. Mm. Yeah, I've... I, I'm going to have to think about it as well. Um... I mean, we did see Pakistan struggling a little bit with placement points, but in comparison to everyone else who's playing that aggressive, like Vietnam, for example, or Indonesia, they've never had a struggle in actually breaking through that phase four, phase five, phase six initial fighting and then getting into late game itself. They've, they've, they've only really had a problem with closing off games, but then again, that doesn't really hinder you of, of being the very one spot. And you can tell that by the, by the by, by, you know, by a look at the leaderboard, 107 points, just speaks volumes for yourself yeah. um are they mathematically qualified i think at this point they already uh, almost are it would once again only happen if three more teams overtake them uh, almost impossible because um, obviously if you, if you if you if you for you to get that many points also means others aren't getting it so for three teams to do it at the same time uh, just not happening so i think at this point once again congratulations to pakistan indonesia another team i quick want to touch on um Based off of the first day of this Group B, we said they were the most consistent team. We said they had the best Wrangle showing and Sandhawk showing that we've seen. But yeah. it's been three games, maybe four games now, maybe even five games now. But we haven't seen Indonesia step up at all, despite showing us the same kind of play style that we expected from them. And the play style that should work, and the play style that is consistent and usually does bring them the best amount of control. So I'm really weird, and I want to get your opinion on this. What, what, what does Indonesia need to do? Is it just a, a matter of more tries that are being needed, and, and maybe it's gonna it's gonna happen at some point? Because I asked you this last time, and you said yes, it's gonna happen. But you also said it's gonna happen in the next two games, and now one is already over. Well, it did. They got ten points in that last game. I think that was pretty good. I think that was pretty solid. It's just the problem that they are competing versus teams uh, that are also getting points on the board, right? Nepal, Malaysia, Nepal especially got um, uh, got decent amounts in that fight. Malaysia had a big gap ahead of Indonesia before this round. So I think they got nine points that game, maybe. I think that was completely fine. From their position, it was a really hard position to be playing out of. They they had very good sense of one positions. They went into a solid phase three position and fought their way up that hill. I think that was all right. I think that was pretty solid. I think if they continue playing like that and they continue finding positions like that, they'll be okay. But as we keep saying all the time, the, 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 the opponents aren't sleeping, right? Nepal, good fight for them on that hill as well. Malaysia, not the best game for them, but uh, they were more consistent throughout the, re the rest of the day. So it's just it's just hard to push yourself past these teams. Um, they've done a good step in the last game. They've closed the gap entirely and even brought it to a tiebreaker, right? But... Um, They'll have to continue playing like that in the last three games. If they don't get yep. their above five points a match in these last three, I don't think it's happening. The, the, Pakistan is on 12 points per game right now. You don't need to be doing that. Um, but you need to be above five or so in the last three here because the competition is just fierce. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping for any fan out there that that is obviously going to come uh, come true. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will be heading into the fourth game and one of the last games, at least the last game of Erangel of this uh, Group B before we can take a look at, at uh, maybe another hint on, on who's really going to take that third and second spot. Any other team you want to you want to talk about because we have plenty of teams. I could want to touch on Myanmar. They've same as Bhutan actually. These two teams have always been on the brink. Whenever they get yeah. a good game, they kind of seem to drop off again. Then they somehow get this miraculous double digit, really strong win or either really good placement, and they drop off again. 
what do you have to say about the consistency? What else do they need to fix in order to finally secure a runner-up spot? I think Bhutan, in a way, is 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 very very close. Um, it felt like they really had it this game. They played a good position. They made sure they could hold out all these Lipovka teams. They uh, worked together with Pakistan to hold out Thailand out of out of out of Lipovka, and then they have basically a position that can win the game, right? We see Pakistan yeah. basically win the game from their position. It's just they get folded in the fight, and they're not ready for it, and they're not ready for the aggression and the team play coming out of Pakistan. So there's just a little edge there um, that the best teams in the lobby have, where it feels like a Myanmar, a Bhutan, a Thailand. They're really solid, good PUBG Mobile teams, but they don't have the crazy con the contingency on each other, the crazy mm -hmm. team play, um, which is why when I see Indonesia in a team fight, I see Nepal in a team fight, I know they're going to pop off. I know they're going to be extremely good with each other and help each other out a lot in these angles and these team fights. That's not as crazy for a Myanmar and a Bhutan. We saw. Um, Myanmar winning that game, right, uh, next to next to Yasnaya. They almost mm. lost the 2v4, um, which is something that I would never expect from a Nepal or Indonesia. No, no. I uh, want to touch on Leo Esports, aka Nepal, as well, because we've got so many fans in the chat right now cheering on them. And a uh, quick shout out to you guys as well. Um, Duga Magar, to name one fan that's just been spamming the Nepalese flag and let's go Leo Esports throughout the entirety of this day so far. So uh, shout out to all you guys, we do see you. I think uh, so does Nepal and its representatives from Leo Esports. But yeah, Nepal kind of the same boat as them. Any specific thing that maybe is 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 it different? It, 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 yeah, it's, it's different, especially from Nepal to Myanmar and the rest of the runner ups because I felt like originally they were way more consistent than what we're seeing right now. Do they maybe have a problem now with adapting to this lobby and their original place that only worked because no one else really was? I think uh, I think they're having a bit of a problem with meeting the top teams all the time, right? It's it's a, it's a very different story. Mm -hmm. Do are you are you fighting a Bangladesh that's really been having a terrible day, or are you fighting a Pakistan while getting third partied by Indonesia, right? And that's what's not really working out super well for Nepal. This is a good graphic, though. This is an interesting graphic. And like we said, right, we, we both said this is probably the man of the tournament, IQ. He has double the damage of second place here, Felix. Unbelievable. Uh, it's just, that is crazy. That just goes to show you how much he's dominating this lobby so far. Give it up for IQ. Even if you're a fan of any other team, you've got to respect IQ statistics here. This is not an easy feat. But also Yummy, I think that's crazy. He's the only player from Indonesia up here. And yeah. he's got 25 eliminations on his lonesome. I think that's more than, might be close to a third, if not more than a third of their frags. This is, this is almost unheard of too. Yeah. So crazy stuff coming out from Yummy as well. Oh, it's half. It's half of their eliminations on one no player. No way. Yeah, it's mental. Wow. It's completely crazy. He's got 50% of the can, kills. Can, can we say that he's carrying them at this point? Oh, I think 100%. that is fair. 100%, wow. but the same is Yummy. the same is kind of true for, for Thailand as well, right? They're, Thailand is in 8th place right now, and then Bullet Evil is in the top 5 of performance throughout this tournament. So that's also crazy, whereas some of the other teams um, are a lot more evenly spread. A Vietnam, a Myanmar, they're way more easy, evenly spread uh, than these teams. But what Yami is doing for Indonesia is mental, and then obviously, I mean, IQ crazy stuff from him we have a game on our hands though guys we are going into what i believe is game match 10 aaron go three more games today ladies and gentlemen we've seen crazy crazy end game endings now throughout the entirety of this day and maybe we will have one more match 10 is starting it is one of the last three games we'll have at the Ogia and Ogiani yeah, qualify here for the ISF World Esports Championship in Riyadh later this year. Once again, the top three teams will be qualifying and will book their tickets, flights and hotels for the tournament that everyone is waiting so patiently for once again later this year in November. So join us once more. Pretty tough playing path, if I may say so. Plenty of teams are going to struggle. It's going to be getting contested. It's going to be congested. It's going to be sticky around the middle, especially Rozok, South Georgia pole, the end of the plane path there. We can already see that the start of the plane path is getting spread nice and evenly. And even the farm sort of area south of Pachinki, I'm spotting Sri Lanka there, Malaysia. I think Japan's in the mix there too. Remember Japan hot dropping there in the last game didn't really net them anything at all. But the circle's gone southwest as well, Felix. So 
Uh, stretching far from the plane path here, going far to loot, might actually be a really valid strategy. Might be a really valid strategy, yes, indeed. And we've seen that time and time again, especially in Lobby A, I want to say, especially in Group A. A lot of teams have adapted towards first circle phases relatively fast, which is why we've seen almost more hot jobs on Aaron Gal at the start of the game than we've seen in Group B, even though there's eight less teams. Because these teams have adapted fast, they, they wanted to get a centralized positions, and they will hard drop and fight for it as well. Which, um, in turn, doesn't make as much sense now that I say it, oh. but it's happening anyway. So, oh, Sidia, you're in big trouble. That's not going to happen. Malaysia's going to pick up an easy frag and Sri Lanka. We've been struggling in this tournament so very much, and first blood is going to be picked up by Malaysia as a result of that. It's a big point for Malaysia. They love every single one of them. They are close to qualifying, but they haven't had that pleasure that Pakistan has had to actually just lock it in. You know, they haven't had the the chance to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. So every single point feels so damn good for them right now. And uh, that's a very nice pickup to start the game, to start the last air angle of the day. Massive, massive pickup. We have the live rankings as well for you guys in case you've just tuned in for the last three matches of this qualification phase. It's the last day of the qualification as well. Yesterday, we've had two teams already make it. In case you haven't seen these qualification games, um, I can only recommend you from the bottom of my heart to watch these games again. They've been nothing short of amazing. Bahrain and Mongolia have secured their tickets. I can already spoil you as much. Um, from Group A. So these two teams will be joining the top three teams of this lobby in Riyadh later this year with the Saudi host country already being invited as well as well as the reigning champions who've been uh, Team Kyrgyzstan and their amazing performance from last year. Kyrgyzstan as well, one of the teams that just seemed better than the rest of the lobby, running away with it at the very end, similar to what we see from Pakistan here and it's going to be a really interesting story, right? Because we're singing the praises here of Pakistan. Um, but the lobby is going to change so much. You take the very best out of each region. You put them on a LAN final. You put them on a stage with a crowd. It's going to be different. It's going to feel different. It is, it's it going is. to hit different. And I can't wait to see it. Brunei cruising towards the circle. They showed promise at the start of the tournament. But I hate to say that they've really been falling off since then. Bangladesh, it's been a troublesome tournament for them, where we see someone from I-8, someone from Pakistan, driving himself over, apparently. I don't think it's going to result in a flush. I can only imagine that was a little bit of... of uh, I mean, I, I was originally going to contr contribute it to, to nervousness, but let's be honest, they're not nervous at all by the way they've been playing. So we'll have to... Yeah, I mean, at this point, we can only guess what happened, but what we do know is it's not going to result in a... Knock and flush, it's only going to be the knock. And knock, you will be rest back up. But yeah, Bangladesh, coming back to Bangladesh. Uh, once again, they've been struggling. Such a such a big nation. Uh, rather experienced roster as well. At least more experienced than plenty of teams above them. Like Brunei, like Timor Leste, they have been. But in contrast to them, they've not caught up to any of the top teams. Despite my prediction for them to do so. 34 points as they currently stand in 12th place. Predictions are tough, man. Lobbies are crazy. Some of the teams are suffering that right now. Some of the teams are understanding that this is pretty hard to predict. It's pretty hard to read what's going to happen. And then other teams are just having a ball, enjoying life. So wait and see how that works out now. Chinese Taipei, winners of the last match. It's going to feel nice. It's going to feel nice to prove that you can do it. It's going to feel nice that you can close out a game against some of the best in the game. But it's not going to change their position. At least not materially. Nope. Definitely isn't. Hong Kong, China. Same kind of scenario for Bangladesh, I feel like. Um, if we got to be honest, though. If, if that region would send its best players, it would be a whole different scenario. I, I feel like... We we gotta get crowded through that region more than do do we have to? No, I think everyone knows the strength of this of this of this region, but um, but either way, I th I I think there are, in the future there is going to be way more potential there. Uh, I don't want to discredit that team, but I just know how strong of a region this is. It's one of the strongest regions in the entire world, and there's a reason why we have fees and salary fees 
on some of these Chinese players that are just past anything I as an esports player have ever come across at and why some of these fees to to maybe have you know transitioning fees from one team to another are, are miraculously high like we're talking six digit US dollar fees for for people like for Paraboy for example so um just to give you guys a perspective how big that region is but I think everyone knows at this point I'm, I'm talking I'm talking about stuff that everyone who's been familiar with PUBG esports knows um it's just been the biggest region for the last four years so um, I'm patiently waiting for them guys to send their A roster if that happens it's going to be another whole different dimension of uh, esports tournaments than what we already have with uh, the amount of viewers and and the amount of incredibly experienced teams like PMGC champions in Group A. PMGC champions, PMSL champions, we've got it all. We've got a good mix of the of the bunch here. And uh, we've got a pretty central circle that is already super stacked. And you can just tell the different playstyles just from looking at this map, right? We have Vietnam, once again, early center compound split. We have Nepal with a bit of something in the middle. And then we have a Pakistan who's vibing. They're chilling. They're across the bridge still. They'll cross later. They'll figure out if they have to cross and when they'll have to cross. We have a Malaysia as well, taking their time, playing it slow on the edge. It's completely, completely different playstyles, polar opposites, and both working out really nicely here. Yeah. Too early to tell whether or not that's going to make a big difference. But sometime soon gonna find out. Kambodja now on the first rotate. They will find one of the players that we've just been talking about. Light. Let's go down. Unfortunately for China, for Hong Kong China, that is gonna be the end for him. He's not gonna get rest back up. I don't think so. Kambodja in too strong of a position to do anything about China. At least for the rest of the rotates, they will make it through. You can tell Cambodia is going to be really happy about this. Also, the team that's been underperforming the most on the second half of the leaderboard, at least in terms of experience across the place. Ah, it's a tough time. I've I've said it time and time again. I am so surprised how many teams were able to stay consistent and proficient in these lobbies, considering how different they play and considering how much of a different game it is. Um, so I'm, I have big respect for everybody that stayed consistent. And I completely understand the teams that haven't. Nepal, finding one or two here. Yeah. Vietnam, finding one as well. That's nice pickups, things you love to see. All these teams. As Vietnam. Needs every single point. So does Nepal. Currently picking up one. Nepal, I think, not getting their flush here. Not getting the connect, because this res that we're watching right now is the knock they had been able to get from quite a long range to a car. Pretty good stuff. Uh, still interested to see whether or not some of these teams are going to change their position if they're on Gekka now. Because we've seen this circle yesterday and it's been working out perfectly for plenty of these teams. And we know these circles also tend to have kind of an affinity around that compound. So I'm really liking this split that we've seen from Nepal right now. I think it's going to make a lot of Nepalese fans really happy. It is one of the strongest positions that was, was the western side. Um, we're going to have to wait and see though. Next circle shift is once again going to give you us give us a pretty good idea on who's got a pretty strong position for this game. And who's going to have to fight through plenty of other teams. And because as of right now, it's still very, very split between all of them. You can see yeah. even Vietnam has got a pretty, pretty split going. They've not only secured Pachinki with the charge, but they've also gotten the compound just west of it. Which is a pretty strong position to hold. And also pretty strong position to hold. And the late game especially, whether or not it shifts west once again. It's to be determined in around 30 seconds, but well, I s I'm talking about all of that. We have another fight coming up, and this is a pretty good one for Indonesia. It looks like they have complete control of the situation, with Laos being sitting ducks right in front of them. This is a fight you love to be taking. You're peeking up from the bottom ridges, you see players above you, and you can start using Util to flush them out. Look at the damage coming in already. Multiple nades on both these players. If they find one opening, it's going to make life so much easier. There's the first. There's the second player down to just 1 HP. Boy, boy. On the prone. And they are trying to flood this as fast as they can, Felix. They want to get these kills before anybody else gets involved. Because once again, every point matters. Ponbit on a bit of a side angle. And Razi is still trying to get it. Finally finds the nade. Finds the second. They find a third. And now they can sw sweep. Now they can swarm this. 
They have a good idea where the last player is, and this might just be four points here for Team Indonesia. Perfect. This is the perfect opportunity. The only thing they need to be careful of is now not getting the trades unnecessarily tough. Uh, uh, you, can, you can tell Pombit has just been taken out w without anyone close by. So, so that's the only thing they really need to be worried about. No, don't lose anyone for nothing. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Just one more shot being needed, right? See? I was scared for a second. He did get taken down very low with no chance for Laos. No one there to support them in their endeavor to staying alive. Um, which which usually other teams can. Um, but this time around, no one's going to be towards their north. No one's going to be too, towards their east. So pretty good stuff from Indonesia in picking this fight. They knew that obviously before they begun that. If, they, if, they, if any team would have had a chance of third partying them, I think Indonesia wouldn't have moved out of the compound. But they also realized the longer they wait, the higher the chance is for that party, third party to come in. So really good stuff coming in from Indonesia. I really like what they did just there. And yeah. result of that, four points and especially confidence. Confidence is the one thing that they've been missing throughout this day. They've played such methodical, strong PUBG mobile, but the big rounds have been missing. Maybe this is the start for Indonesia to come back into contention for the top three spots. This is what they need. Circle goes towards the west. Nothing major for most of the teams here. They knew there was a chance of this happening. Nepal set up nicely. Vietnam in a beautiful split. And what is that? Pakistan is in a breach versus Sri Lanka. This is clumsy. Holding on. 1v3. It's just 1 HP left on Yoni. He's coming around the corner as well. He might get this. What is oh, that? That's a 1v4. Oh my goodness. That is the most absurd stuff we've ever seen. The one what? team that's not been dealt with from anyone has suddenly been 1v4 by Clumsy. And out of all the nicknames to do it, it's been Clumsy too. He's anything but Clumsy. Let's be honest. 1v4 against the strongest team in the lobby. And we're getting right back into the action as Malaysia is trying to pick up some points as well. Shackle looks like he's one of the only players remaining, at least in this compound. And on the northern side of it, as the rest of his teammates are falling as well. Chevy goes down. Pia Zhao follows right after. It's only one player left alive. And Malaysia has not lost a single one, at least. Flushed has not lost a single one, to be uh, to be exact. No, you can tell all of them are still standing. And Kenny is in the process of being corrupt as well. Clark's making moves. Staying alive. Dodging around the corners. He's now trying to make the push. Shackle. His days are numbered, time is running up, and Malaysia stays clean in it. Malaysia getting three, Indonesia already getting themselves four. The top is heating up, Vietnam's in a prime position as well, Felix. It's looking like they're all just going to have good games again from here. Yeah, it looks like it. We've got to get a replay of it, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. The 1v4, clumsy, one, two, three. How on earth? The pre-fire on all of them. Oh my god, the turnaround as well! Yeah. Clumsy's nuts! He is absolutely nuts. And then the push around the corner as well does not let him give... Just doesn't give him the time to pop off that first set either. My goodness, that is played to absolute perfection. Clip that, get it on your Instagram, and share it as much as you can, because that's one of the craziest things you'll ever do in your entire career. Against the best team in the lobby, no less. Against the best team you can find. Easy one we fought. Jimmy finds one of Nepal, though. That's a big fight, Falex. That's a big... That's a big bunch of teams that we have to care about. Nepal finally having to move on in. And it's looking like that's erupting between Malaysia and Nepal. It looks like... Indonesia... This for the time being doesn't have a problem. Quite unconscious to, as you said, Nepal. And these are some massive, massive knocks. Look at this. Liquid jumping straight in. Doesn't even wait for his teammates. He's all alone on that eastern side, but he also needs to. Because otherwise his teammates will be flashed through the windows. A couple of more shots being traded, but Liquid still stays alive. Double nade coming out from both of these teams, actually, now. I think Liquid and Ajaya are both throwing it out as well. This is disastrous. That's a flush. That's the one thing that Nepal just didn't want to happen. Not only a flush, but also he takes down Liquid to 20 HP. First stage should be fine. That nade almost would have caught him if it would have been thrown five seconds earlier. But for now, he's staying alive with Malaysia still having two players inside of it. Oh, I think... Oh, that's a big nade. That's a big nade. That's a double nade from oh Cluck. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's so big over the top. I think he knocks himself on the process as well. Maybe it's a triple nade in that sense. But he does take that one. And Adaya has to do it all. DBS oh. in hand, comes around the corner. Kenny's in the open. Oh. And Kenny oh. is sat down. Malaysia is not going to win this one. But it's Nepal just bleeding players as well. I don't even know if they're going to get the res here, Felix. No. 
I um, mean, stage four might just be too late, but he could pick him up, put him on the back of a vehicle and just drive him out of there. That's definitely an option. Question is where to? As we have the next fight raining on in the next fight, I should say, because Indonesia is fighting against Bhutan as well. Vietnam, big trouble around Pachinki. Gozu now could trade things out, though. He knows exactly where the play is out. This could be a perfect nick. Pops it across the ridge line. No damage being done, though, apart from the knock he's already got. Lamborghini, he was the player on top. He was the player with all the information. He was the player with all the vision. Now they have to figure out what they want to do with this Vietnam. They have to take down Thailand, and it's a big cross for Gozu. What is that? Does he not know there's more players there? Does he not want to respect he them at all? Have, right? Oh, that is just the worst thing that could have happened for Vietnam in that position. Unfortunate. It's only one frag so far for Vietnam. Quan Chi is all left on his lonesome. He's the last player standing for the Vietnamese national team. And at least he's got one more nate. But he's got three more Thailandese, Thailand players. Thailandese, what, what is that? What is that? Doesn't he mix this? No. <laughs> Thailand players right in front of him. So many countries at some point. I gotta mix them up. Look at this. They're driving down now. Quan Chi has to defend it. Good for Johnson. Look at this. Secret is really low on HP as well. Quan Chi's got the chance. He doesn't hit the S12K shot to trade things out. No, indeed he doesn't. Even if he would have, I don't think it would have mattered. There's another team right on their ridge line already driving up. And it is Myanmar. They want to get a piece of the action too. And they will do so as well since Thailand only has one more play as well. And it is Bull Evil. All the way up towards church. Yeah, Cambodia as well, getting third-party shots in there. It wasn't just Myanmar. It's just not, not possible here to get out of this cleanly anymore. There's Japan that's lurking on the backside as well, a little bit further down the hill. It is far away shots coming on in. It is still evil on top of that church. Six eliminations is good for Thailand, but they need much more. They need so much more. Myanmar on three, Indonesia on five right now. But Indonesia, they can still play out of their compound here. If they play this cleanly and they clean up their edge, this could be the game they need. But so far, at least they've gotten themselves a few kill points where Malaysia, Nepal, we've both seen them go out, right? The competition has given them a chance. Oh, Indonesia continues to frag out. Maybe he's going to get the second one as well. Ling Yong is out in the open for anyone to potentially pick him up and yeah there he goes indonesia picking up another frag hong kong china being Indiana. eliminated now as well it is indonesia back in play six frags they are not inside the circle though as they are fighting for a spot inside of it and you can tell they want to fight this with nades in particular Cambodia right in front of them they know their positions four five six seven maybe eight nades raining in already no knocks though it feels like these nades are coming wow. short just a tiny bit they're just not they're just not getting any results on them they looked so good they looked solid and there were so many of these nades coming on in but really not finding anything and the second they over peak the second they stay in for a little bit too long they instantly take the damage so uh, tricky questions now for Indonesia. Do you do you wrap back south? Do you give this one up? Yummy is taken out to just one HP, trying to prone up behind the car. The pressure is on, and there's no easy solution for them here. There's no easy way out of this. They really have to step up and figure out something to make it work. Nemo Lester still looking for that initial shot, looking for that initial entry. They've been playing it very calmly, very calm and collected, especially in from the northeastern side. They've held this rich line right in front of them clear so that they can take it later on. So really good stuff coming in from Timo Lester. Good rotation to find themselves a good spot inside stage five. And the next circle closing, still more teams that will have to fight their wheel. And Indonesia being one of them. They do opt now for a very far southern road. So they'd have to be careful though. Japan is in front of them. Do they know of this? I think if they would have known this before the rotation started, I don't feel like they would have driven here because without smokes, there's no survivability. They need to clean them, and they do. Francie gets an opening. Apollo goes down. They're just barely out of nade range as well. They're barely out of nade range, which is absolutely massive. Now the pull-up comes in. Pombit, he's been baiting for a while, but he can't any longer. Matun close range with the Serezi. He does lose it out. There's just one left standing. It's Naoto. Nade in hand. Can he do it? It's probably too little too late, but... Oh, he barely, barely doesn't get it done. Indonesia stays alive for just another second, but there's already new contenders coming in. That's nine defeats, though. That's a good bunch of points they've already got it. Yeah, look at this. Me and Mart for parting things, as you said, and suddenly it's down to just one player. In Indonesia, they just cannot seem to catch any breath. They just cannot seem to get into the late game stages anymore. It is so unfortunate. Once again, really tough circle for Indonesia. They do the best with it, but I got a fee for them at some point.
and, and that point I think is reached now. They've been they've been struggling with these zones so so very heavily, and I once again I sympathise. It's it's been anything but easy for them. Next slide is coming up. Timo Lester. We talked about that great rotation. Oh. There's Chinese time Brave rotating in by behind them. First knock goes down. Second knock goes down. That is a straight cleanup, if I may say so myself. Except for that one player that got away. But this is this is just I mean this is a uh, this is a a kill. Uh, airdrop to some degree with the way they flew in. That's just an, an, a very easy pickup for them, actually. Look at Kamboja as well, trying to peek on over. Look at both sides oh, of this. The nade right. comes through. Now Kamboja, they're going to start looking again. Pov Pov on, on the top. He's going to look for players to find. William, last one up for his squad. It's not looking easy. It's not looking good. They were holding on here, Team Olesta. They were doing what they could, but just crunched in between two teams. Nothing. Nothing they can pull off here anymore, but I say that, Pov Pov, Cambodia, they're forgetting about the, about the Team Olesta player. They're running over the top of this. They're making this possible now. Oh my goodness, and look who's the last man standing next to William. It is Emperor out of all the players. It is Emperor. So that breach maybe wasn't even that bad to begin with. I feel like it, it, the only reason it didn't work out was because the, because the timing wasn't perfect, right? Emperor peaked a little too late while his teammates were already flying in. They really needed support from the Richland he's playing at right now. He has no idea. William is still inside the car. He doesn't see him. He doesn't see him. Oh my, no, no way. And he stopped looking for it. He, 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 he thinks there's no one else coming in. If William clutches this, that would be nothing short of amazing. What a play from William. He's done it the, again. The massive remember amounts the first, of steel. Remember the first game of this group. He was snaking in on Sanok, snaking in behind oh, yeah. multiple oh, teams, ruining the game for Indonesia. Now he's spotted, oh. but he's had a fair chance at this 1v1. Comes over the top, oh. good bunch of damage. Ooh. Oh, it's one or two bullets with the UMP. William, not able to do it for Timor. Leicester, it's Taipei who stay in this for now. Taipei have really had a bit of a glow up here in the last few games, Felix. They're, yes. They're coming back into this. They're showing everybody, hey, we're here to play as well. Yes, they are. One of the teams that is having the same kind of stories in Asia. Look at this. They've made it past the 80 points mark with this game and we said they have been struggling to get into late game at least so far five now even though it's once again been a really tough road i think anyone who's watching this has to agree with us it's it's it, indonesia has had some of the toughest circles out of all the tough teams and it, there's been a reason why they've had three consecutive relatively bad games now but it's not meant to continue staying this way no indeed they will Find a top four in this one, despite once again having a really tough road in and the fighting though. That's been a big part. That's been amazing for them. Starting off with Laos, they fought them way in to the eastern yeah. side and somehow they even made it past me and Mana, who, who, who was literally rotating down the hill right next to them. But somehow, yeah, he's somehow he's, he's, he's still left standing. Frenzy, last survivor for Indonesia. He's going to try and stay low. He's nading the smokes here a little bit to put some pressure towards the Myanmar players, but realistically, he doesn't have to do a whole lot. But there's one Nepal player, by the way. There's one Nepal player still in this, creeping his way on in on the western side. We completely forgot about him, because we haven't seen him in the last 15 minutes. But he's still in this. He's getting placement points for his team. He's potentially maybe getting one or two more kills in this as well, because I don't think, I don't think the Maldives are all too aware of his position. Myanmar want to close this out, though. Yeah, they want to clear this edge. Understandably so. As soon as Frenzy is gone, they can take control of the complete east side. And that is so much space they can gain. Still, he, team I, 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 I get second here. Watch this. He's probably, yeah, he's probably going to get second, actually. Nano has to probably move in before he does. The Maladives have no idea he's there. If he doesn't get spotted by Myanmar, I think he has a really good chance to actually get second. This is... Uh, this could be exactly what Nepal need, because Indonesia has been putting up big numbers this game, right? Malaysia, uh, good eliminations, but out early. And now Nepal, they're trying to sneak themselves into play some points here. Maldives closing the distance, though. And they still have a lot of control over the eastern side. Just need to be careful. Right now, his teammate can't really support him from the western side, I, I think at least. Headlines are really going to work if Myanmar decides to push them away from the hill up top. But it looks like they're not trying to either. It looks like they're smoking themselves off. Yeah, you can see the rich lines. Okay, so this is a brilliant push actually from the Maldives. Um, 
Myanmar can't really do anything against Nanu being right on top of them. So even yeah. if he gets knocked, and that's that's the essential part about this, even if he gets knocked, Myanmar can't push it. There's too many sidelines from the rest of his team. It's great 2-2 split. But then again, be reminded, Nepal has a player right behind them that could still ruin the entirety of their game. Phase 8 comes in. Most of the players are out of the circle right now. Not a whole lot of cover in. The ridge next to Myanmar is still in play. If they somehow survive the onslaught, if they maybe catch some of the Myanmar players as they have to make the move, there's a chance. Ayaya, I think he's biding his time here. I think he's waiting for these Myanmar players, uh, for these Maldives players to make a move because he doesn't want to give himself away just yet. Getting both of these kills here would be massive, but how is he going to confirm them? if he's instantly traded out by the rest of the squad. So he's going to bide his time for as long as he can and then just creep on in behind them. It's what he should do as well, to be honest. No. Oh, he gets spotted out. I was about to say, does, does Nanu spot him? Oh. This is so important for Maldives. This this frag alone might have secured them the round. We, it's not to be underestimated. That, that frag oh, gives them the information no one's behind them anymore and they've got their complete backside clear. Also, gives them a placement point and more freedom to play into that next circle. Massive stuff from the Maldives. Both the solos taken out, that also means that the Maldives now know exactly how many players they're up against. They know that this is not a four man. They know there's only three players left that they're squaring off against, right? And that allows them to play with a little bit more information. The, the rundown is not easy for the two southern players. So I would hope the two northern players can do something about this, but so far it's been tricky for them. They don't want to overextend. They don't want to lose their position either, so. A really, really powerful ridge for Myanmar, and I feel like they're using it to its full extent right now. They're just showing that they're using their terrain a little bit better than what the Maldives have been able to pull off. Big, big numbers is what they've been able to pull off in this round so far, and something quite in contrast to their recent tournament performance, where it was honestly anything else but big numbers. <laughs> I mean, they have never gotten into late game this steep. Let's see if they make it count. Me and Ma, on the other hand, they have, and they have shown us today already, they can win these types of games as well. Even if they're in a disadvantage, which they are right now, at least man-wise. Nanu picks up another good position close in front of me and Ma. They can't really peek this just yet, but there's an A coming on through, and this is Sayu oh, going big. down. So the backup player, the anchor player, is eliminated, and maybe that nade is going to seal the deal. Yes, it does. This is almost unwinnable now. This is beautifully played by Myanmar. It's another banger game coming out of them. They've had two today. The oh MG3 can't God. fix it. And it's a clean up. Unbelievable stuff. I thought it was a 4 on 3 and they had all the positions in the world. There was no way for them to pick up this one. But Myanmar proves us wrong. And you can tell the, the Maldives, they were scared. They were scared to take these fights. They knew who was in front of them. And they just didn't have the confidence to to play off of each other as teams and, and also take individual peaks as much as Myanmar did. Myanmar, no problem, played Kum Kum collected. At no point did they feel like they were at a disadvantage. And look at this, 22 points as yeah. a result. That is what you want if you're one of the runner-up teams that was maybe even a little bit further behind than some of these other big names like Nepal and Indonesia. Big, big stuff. And on the overall leaderboard, we're going to see that in a minute. It might even secure them a spot in the top three for the time being. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a top three, but they're definitely getting close. That their, their, their only problem is that, we're watching it here, Indonesia started getting points early. Four defeats yeah. in, in, in phase three, and they got more in the longer run. We had uh, a crazy one before from Clumsy, absolutely popping off. I don't know how he gets that oh, kill. Yes. I don't know how he gets that second one. That's the most not crazy sure. one. But um, we had Nepal fighting off Malaysia, right? Malaysia getting a good bunch of points before that, Nepal winning that 1v3 in the end, or 1v2 for Ajaya. So everybody else is going to put points on the board. And that's the problem for a team like Myanmar. When you leave it so late, when you leave it so late for the comeback, it's not really fully in your hands anymore. Even Vietnam, with a few questionable decisions, they got points for themselves. So the leaderboard is going to stay really stacked, I think. Nobody's really separating themselves at all. No, um, it's all going to be very, very, very grouped up together. And this, this is such a good thing for the viewer in and of itself. Because whenever a top team does massive amounts of points, usually all the runner-ups are having a good game right after. So it's going to stay very, very interesting. We see the last couple of fights from Indonesia. Um, if Myanmar wouldn't have been in their backs, I think that maybe even would have been their win because they would have been in the position that Myanmar um, ended up in 
um, at the end of this one. And we also are seeing this last fight against from Timo Leste, who almost made the impossible happen. They got breached from both sides. And we're still almost the, the one team surviving towards the north. Yeah, I just, I just wish we could have seen the Ajaya snake story come to fruition. He was biding his time for so long, but yeah, nothing really happened in front of him. The Maldives were not forced into a fight early enough, so he can't close it out there. Big ridge that Myanmar is playing. Lots of good terrain they're controlling, and it gives him the win in the end here. Six Elims on West Carry again. He's really been staying true to his name. He's really been putting up numbers for that team. And uh, I, once again, like you said, I think it's going to put them into contention again. But they are one of these teams where we've been talking about, they haven't been able to string the rounds together, right? No, just really not. Um, let's take a look at some of these team statistics though. Wes Carey, we gotta give a shout out to him before we dive, dive deeper into the analysis of the last game. Almost a thousand damage, six elimination. He was the key factor in taking down Indonesia, which was the most important fight for them, even though they were heavily advantageous going into this. But that was the, the most important thing. And he, he, he played the biggest part in that fight when they were driving down the hill and, and I think took down two of the players from Indonesia. So six frags on him, Wes Carey, Big shout out to him. Almost 1k damage. That's something that you don't see happening every day. And if you, if you take a look at your formula, right, with 948 damage divided by 268, I think he's in a pretty good spot to also take the match MVP. Definitely. Definitely. So 22 points. We've just, we're have just we just seeing double digit, double digit games every single time. We're not really seeing small wins today at all. 14 for Indonesia as well is big though. Nepal with 8. Malaysia with 6. And, oh boy, it's getting feisty up at the top. I think, I think Pakistan, now that they punched their tickets, now that they've secured the spot, they've, they've, they've hit the full brace, right? Um, full stop into the UMP of Sri Lanka. So, top is getting spicy, top is getting stacked. I'm not sure how close Myanmar has gotten themselves, but considering that they're catching up 14 points towards a team like Nepal here, um, it's a big step to make. It's a massive step to make. It is absolutely massive. But we're seeing the same pattern again in this one. I know we've talked about it already, but we're seeing the same pattern again. Malaysia, Thailand, Nepal, Indonesia, Myanmar, none of the top teams that are run out to Pakistan do, do anything of the sort of slowing down. Six points, yes, it might not seem massive, but it's exactly what you need in a round where you just don't necessarily have the op don't necessarily have the option or advantage in in winning uh, winning a game. So salvage as much as you can. Six points is definitely enough to salvage to still stay in the run. Yes, it's not going to catapult you um, up into a qualification spot, but it's going to get close to to at least these top three positions. And then you still have two more chances, right? Maybe you'll be blessed with a circle. Maybe you 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 find your inner strength more than. And, um, you know, what you have in, in, in the last 10 games. And I think that's what what's everyone's been banking on, um, right? These last 10 games have been um, have been very tedious, have been very have been very tough on, on, on mental on anyone. So I think having now two games will really let shine really is going to be so, so important for them. Myanmar. West Carey, most Elims, most assists on the squad as well. And then William is uh, the, the one with the most damage. The, the car boy, the backseat, the backseat snake. I wish he would have pulled that off. I would have been so yeah, happy. Yeah, I think we all off, were but, wishing for it, right? Uh, yeah, you're, you're always cheering for an underdog, but it wasn't meant to me. Another cool show in, though, another good moment for Timo Leste. They've been flashy when they pop off just haven't been able to string the rounds together. Like you said, West Carry, six eliminations and the bunch of damage that he got is enough for a match of MVP. And yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering. We can't do the maths in the middle of the game. I'm just wondering, where does Myanmar stand now? I think they might stand in fourth, but I, I can't do I the think, maps. It's too complicated. I, I honestly think they might be higher. I think they're going to be in the top three. They've been, I think there was like a 15-point difference, 15, maybe 20-point difference between them and like a top three position. And Indonesia has maybe done like, yeah, Indonesia they've gotten got 14 like, this like 14. It should still yeah. be enough. It should still be enough. I think Indonesia is going to be in. Indonesia second, surely. Indonesia second, Malaysia has been passed. And then I'm not sure where Myanmar stands, but team head to head. And uh, it is 12 Elims versus nine and a chicken dinner. So quite a bit of a gap here.
between Myanmar and Indonesia. Ten assists as well. Double of what Indonesia's been able to gather, but they've played essentially completely different games here. Not not to compare those two, it, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, it is just a different game they played, but it's a very convincing end game for Myanmar, especially. They really play that late game to perfection. And uh, you love to see that. Gonna have to see what other stats we are looking at before we have the overall standings. Because that's really what matters. And uh, we're gonna have to look at, have, have a look at that in another few seconds. And there it is. Pakistan obviously is still first. That was always obvious. Indonesia stays in first and Felix is right. First prediction he got right. Damn. My boy. Put Myanmar in third, and they are actually closing out that gap. Nepal in fourth right now, Malaysia in fifth, Vietnam not even touching, not even touching the contestion points right now. This is mental. Myanmar has actually bombarded themselves up into third. Massive. Um, I, 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 I didn't think it was going to be that close, to be honest. I didn't think Myanmar was going to be ahead in, in third, but only two points, but apparently um, it, it's really going to come down to the wire. We have two more matches to go, ladies and gentlemen. Myanmar is only two points ahead of a qualification spot. Even if Indonesia doesn't have a big game anymore, they could easily drop out. I mean, Myanmar maybe has a five-point game, Nepal has a, has a six-point game, and boom, Indonesia is out. They haven't won any games, which no. is also really important, because if we're thinking about tiebreakers already, and Literally just yesterday we had to use them almost at least almost it was three point difference, but almost we had to use them Then it does become relevant who's having more when we're checking dinners and me and Ma I mean my goodness they've won three rounds already the rounds that they should have won Were the rounds that they did win as opposed to plenty of other yeah. top contenders So they will have an advantage going into these last matches in terms of tie uh, breakers uh, when it when yeah and we do have a, a, a point a point tie, which which could, once again, very well happen. Nepal and Malaysia are so close to it. It's all in the realm of 10 points. In Vietnam, could still very well make it in with a, with a good round, maybe even a win. So it's it's really going to come down to the way, and it really is. Yeah, 100%. Uh, this is going to be a tricky one. This is going to be a close one. And so far, the teams have managed to actually make it closer every single time, right? Every time we think things are decided, uh, another team steps up. Now suddenly Myanmar is in the mix for the first time ever. And uh, it's 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 absolutely mental. Indonesia finally stringing a few runs together, coming back to their usual form. But we'll have to wait and see. This is These are the teams that haven't been pulling together what they wanted to. But at least Chinese Taipei has shown a lot of signs of life here. Yeah, Taipei with this round are saying hello again. Um, they're almost saying hello to the first uh, page for the leaderboard as well. <laughs> it's been it's been uh, a tough tournament for them so far. I mean, they're giving their best to represent their nation, but the, the big rounds have been missing in, in a big way. So unfortunately, um, the the chances of them qualifying to to Riyadh are slim to non-existent at this point anymore. Even two two matches we were talking about all this this kind of mathematical stuff yesterday. Uh, even even with these two more chances, even if they take them, they win both rounds convincingly. Maybe do ten elimination seeds, forty points. Still not going to get you. Still not going to get yeah. you anywhere close to the qualification spot. So unfortunately, they're out of the running already. It is what it is. A lot of teams are not out of the running, though. A lot of teams are extremely close. So we have two more games for you guys to decide who goes to the World Esports Championship. In Riyadh, two more games, two more breaks. We're back in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> 